Hi everyone, welcome back, it's Deborah, and I'm here with another video at last. So today I'm going to do some flip throughs and I'm going to also show you these cute little labels that I got from Wonder Label. So they took a few weeks to come but I'm actually super happy with them. And these are for my sewing but I could use them in a junk journal as well. And you can choose all lot, different lots of colours. I chose this pretty pink and I've put my name and of the shop and also a little heart and you can change that little image up as much as you like and I think that they are there are 50 in here which is quite a few and I think that they're around $20 including delivery so that's pretty good so I haven't got the address but if you google wonder label spelt like that if you wanted any then you can get them. You can also get them in different amounts, like you can get 10 or whatever. I think the 50 pack was kind of like the best price. In terms of size, you can also change up the size. Obviously, the more, um, the larger they are, the more they're going to cost. So these are about two and a half inches by half an inch. And they also don't have any threads or anything on them. So the edges are sealed. So if you just want to sew one little piece on or stick it in a journal or whatever, you can do that. But as I said, I've bought them to put onto my sewing projects and possibly a couple in my journals as well. So that's one thing. Now I've got three magazines for you today. I'm going to start off with Somerset Studio. I also have, in case you're wondering, Daphne's Diary, which was gifted to me by a lovely friend. This is the... Um, I don't know, number five edition for 2021. So I'm not sure how often it comes out, but I think that it's the most recent one. And also, she also gave me a copy of Frankie magazine. So I'm gonna do Somerset Studio, which is the latest edition that I've received, Daphne's Diary, and then Frankie. So if you don't wanna stay around for these two, you don't have to. I will try and remember to put a marker in for where the three of them start but I may not remember because my brain's not working real well, but we'll see how we go. So this is the Somerset Studio. Now let me just tell you when this is for. It is August, September, October, 2021. So I received it a couple of weeks back. I just haven't had the, um, the time or the stamina to flip through for you, but here it is here and they always give you a couple of covers to choose from before they publish. If you subscribe, you often you'll get an email, in fact you always get an email saying which cover do you prefer? And I think that this was my preferred cover, not that they take any notice, or maybe they do, but they give you, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a buy-in to what appears on the front cover. And usually the one they choose is the one that I would have chosen anyway. So this is just gorgeous. I have to find out who's done that. I'm sure it'll show you in the journal, um, in the magazine, I'm sorry. I'll apologize up front for any mistakes I make with my words. It's just how it is these days. And I'm just, just starting to, um, trying to get used to it actually. So a beautiful magazine and I am subscribed till February next year. I get this out of the US. I tell, say this every time, but I'm going to repeat it. I can't get this here in Australia. I've contacted Somerset Studio in the US. They tell me they have no outlets in Australia. I have read of other people who have got their news agent to order it in for them. I would find that quite unusual because posted this cost me about $25. And if they're only gonna get one in, you know, I, I don't know whether they would do that for you, but you can always try. I do an annual subscription for a, about $100 Australian, including postage, and there are four a year. So $25 Australian per issue. And I know that's a fair bit to pay for one magazine, but I just go back through them all the time and I love them. And I had a whole bunch of really old ones that I used to be able to buy here in Australia. And when I did a clean up, many years ago I got rid of them all and I'm kind of regretting that so these ones will be staying with me as they build up. Anyway they show you the other things that they make as well. I also like the art journaling book. I haven't subscribed to that yet but I may well do so. I did pick one of those up when I was in the UK a couple of years ago but I've uh, re-gifted that on to 
um, my niece because she was into you know learning art journaling so I don't have that one anymore but that's okay we can always buy more if we need it so there's always a little blurb about this in her studio is a really lovely magazine too I don't subscribe to that but I know somebody who does and it's um it's beautiful if you like looking through people's studios and also if you just like to touch the magazines I know all these things are online but it's really nice to actually have a bit of paper in your hands so there's always a blurb from the editor in the front and I have to admit I've not really had a look at this or read any of the articles in it as yet but I'm sure that I will and they do lots of other magazines as well so let's get into it and always little interesting things all through the magazine to look at other than the big articles there's lots of things that people send things by mail and this is just something that somebody's posted so is this they always have some letter type things here and then finally we get to the index so I'm just going to take you through it and I wanted to say if there's anything specific that you want me to drill down on in a future video just leave me a comment like if you see something and think oh I'd really like to know a bit more about that article I will make a note of it and um, and do an in-depth of that article if anybody's interested in that I do try things out in these magazines I'll see how I go over the next few months in trying things out but in the past I've always tried to, to try things and uh, put my own spin on them which is what it's all about look at this gorgeous thing here it's just beautiful that's just lovely so this article here these ones are done with uh, black and white photos and it always gives you a supply list down here and um, you know then they've used other things gel medium and book covers and pencils and cardstock and things to make them it's really cool isn't it here's some more here it's just beautiful the old-fashioned images the old images I love them so this is the next one and she looks like she's using plate made of plastic mineral oil and a few other things would make the most unique tools for creating one-of-a-kind art all right so let's um have a look I think this is about gel pressing yes gel printing plate the gel press she used and to make these they're very different aren't they hang on I've missed a page and the next one's called nature walk and it's boxes acrylic paint balsa wood cardboard box okay so it's just about making things with that that's a really cool idea see I wouldn't actually like to do this that's just not me but when I see that that gives me inspiration so it's not about copying what's in the book and doing what's in the book it's about being inspired by it and I see that and think oh I've got some ideas I can do with that and these of course are the artist papers which I do try and use because they are really lovely really nice and thick and really lovely and look at that that would create a lovely background on a page or anything really in a piece of ephemera there's a pretty pink one and then they do a spotlight section so these are bold botanicals and bold's not my thing as you probably know but they're still nice and this is by Kristen Kristen Hammonds Alex Castro Ferreira by Christine Hammonds so the articles oh okay sorry let me try again this is the artist profile and this is the artist and this is the, the person who wrote it so that's gorgeous love that love all this stitching I must try and do a bit more stitching on my projects maybe that's something I can take away in the van with me and do some stitching and practice because I'm really not very good at it I saw the most amazing slow stitch thing the other day and I must find it again and see if I can uh, work out how they did it it's a, it was actually an embroidery thing and it was a, a year or she hadn't finished but it was basically she was doing 12 months of embroidery on this uh, embroidery ring and it was just beautiful look at these lots and lots of inspiration oh that's gorgeous I think she's even used some wire down here and yeah this is beautiful isn't it 
Well, if you like this as much as I do, you'll think it's beautiful. Looks like she's got some little drawers with knobs there and some old um, transformers or something. I think they are old transformers. So it's all mixed media, which is gorgeous. This is another spotlight, mixed media meditations. They're very serene, aren't they? I think this must be doodling. It must be some sort of doodling and I definitely think this is either mark making or it doesn't look like stitching, it might be mark making. Yes, doodle, repetitive patterns, drawing lines, cutting scraps of paper. That might be very therapeutic, I could do something like that. Botanicals and birds, this one's cool. And then they always give you some empty pages where you can doodle your own things or practice or play. I don't use a lot of these, but you could use these as papers in your journals. No reason why not, if you wanted to rip the magazine up. I usually take out the artist papers because they are, um, they have a, a, you know, thing where you can take them out. But I don't usually rip the magazine up other than the artist papers. I might take out some of these occasionally, but I don't take the articles out. This one's celebrating ferns, gorgeous. It's another spotlight article. And then we've got this one here, which looks like it's about stenciling. Yes, that's lovely. This is really pretty. Beautiful colours in that. And that reminds me of the new Tim Holtz Villainous Poison, the new purpley colour that he's got in this beautiful purple. I haven't got any of it yet, but I will hope to get some at some point. I'm not really using very much at the moment, so there's probably no reason to get things. Oh, look at this. This is like a stitch thing. Isn't that cute? Beautiful. A mischief maker. Hmm, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Here's another one. Look at the colours in that. That's a piece of artist paper. So the artist papers are all from the artists in the book. So they'll, you know, zoom in or print something that comes from one of the, uh, or several of the artists in the book. And that's lovely. It usually says who's, uh, who owns it on the back. And then this one here as well. So that's another artist paper there. And then this is the one that's on the front cover called November Garden. Yeah, I've done things like that. I've shown you things where I've done that before in a previous video. If I can, I'll try and find the link where I showed you some of that that I'd done. But this is beautiful. That was the artist paper we looked at before. Yeah, I really like all the colours in here. And there's quite detailed explanation of what to do. And these are Coast of Victories. Okay, so I think they must have taken a coaster and made something out of them. Mother Nature is the first source. Okay, let's just look at what they've used. Beads, charms, wooden coasters, dried plant materials, driftwood, eco dye scraps, glue, grass paper, sewing machine, sticks and wire. So cute little wall hangings. You could make those as big or as small as you like too, I would think. Or you could just take the inspiration and move them into a uh, junk journal so that you wouldn't uh, have things to hang on the wall. But I don't have a lot of wall space, so that's my problem <laughs> in my uh, studio or in my house either. Oh, pretty colours. And autumn berries we've got here, which is another spotlight. Yes, I have to see how they made that. Found object paint brushes. That just gets my creative juices going looking at that one. I don't know about you, but it certainly does for me. Gorgeous. And they're making their own paint brushes and things, I would think, by the look of that. Just with um, threads and things and sticks just to make marks. That's a lot of fun, mark making. And then botanical beauties we've got here. 
again something very adaptable to a junk journal or to stand alone. And then we've got Collector's Choice Explorations with Vintage Lace. Oh yeah, here's the Vintage Lace up here. And I think these might be too. Little bits of it there. Oh, there's quite a bit actually. Oh wow, look at that. That's very cool. And then Nature's tre Treasure Vessels. So we've got like a little matchbox thing with a cotton reel and some little bits of nature stuff in them. They're not really nice stacked up there. That's the front cover in the artist paper. Embrace your art tag cards, this one is. Lots of botanicals in this issue. Lots of plants and things being used. Really nice though. A year in my journal this is called. Look at that, that's lovely. Lots of um, alcohol inks, the colours are. I just read there. some more bare pages to play with and then we've got reader submissions on expressions. Oh that's lovely. Looks like an old piece of jewellery or something there. Yeah add the jewellery to display. Some more through here, botanical bookmarks. Four Seasons, some circle ones there. So these are all reader submissions that where perhaps they've just put something in but they haven't had enough to do an article. So they do these little ones and of course people from all over the world submit to this. More of the artist papers. Then we've got final impressions, they're very cool. Oh, here's a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, because it's Halloween, I think. This is why we're getting things like this in here. They're very cool anyway. And this is an eco dyed mini journal, this one. Wow. So we're getting to the end of it now. Little one at the end. And then the all in the details page, which is one of my favourite sections because it shows you in deep at some of the things that are in the book. It's really nice. And you get lots and it tells you what page it comes from as well. So if you want to look back, you can. And you can get some of these on a download now, which are about, I don't know, it depends how old they are. Some of them are as expensive as getting the book, but also some of them are about half price but I just think it's nice to have a, an actual magazine in your hand occasionally. So <laughs> just the last little bit coming up in the next issue. I always give you a bit of a teaser and the editor's picks different products and things and then I think we've come to the end. They tell you how to get published and that's the end and this is the um, previous Tim Holtz salvaged patina which I actually did pick up a distress oxide in that because it's just too pretty and I think the villainous poison is going to go really well with that too when I finally get a copy of that I, I um, get one of those so that is Somerset Studio. Now I'm going to go on to Daphne's Diary. And this Daphne's Diary, as I said earlier, is number five for 2021. 
and it's just really pretty. The cover is gorgeous, isn't it? It's very bright and cheery. And then you've got all this. This is a lot bigger than Somerset Studio. It's a lot larger page. I'll just get this back and show you. So we've got a good sort of inch at the top and maybe a quarter of an inch down the bottom. It makes a on the side, sorry, it makes a big difference to what you're actually flicking through and a very different magazine, really, really different. A bit of everything in this magazine. I have purchased it before and I did really like it, but it's been a while since I've bought one, so I was very thrilled to be gifted this one by a good friend. Lots of lovely reading and browsing in here, shopping. So if you've never bought this, it, then you can get this in your local newsagent or many newsagents. And sometimes I think even Coles might stock it or maybe it was Woolies one or the other. But it's got sort of everything in it. And again, things like these, are, they're perforated so you can pull them out and make them up. And a whole heap, as I said, like displays and recipes and art and everything. This is just gorgeous. What a beautiful house. I'll be looking forward to flicking through this as well. Having a deep read. Oh, look at the slippers. They're very cute, aren't they? <laughs> Obviously this person's making them. And this has got food and drink. I've even got holiday bingo. Oh, there's a little bingo stickers. They often have little things like this in them where you can put things on just for something different. Lots of travel stuff, which is always inspirational, even though we can't go at the moment. Eventually it will open up again, or maybe you might have already been to some of these places. It's nice to look back on what um, you know what they're uh, they've got there and oh this is soap it's got to be soap it looks good enough to eat but I think that it's soap maybe it's not oh no it's ice cream blueberry I was gonna say it looks good enough to eat make your own blueberry ice cream oh there's something I'll try and do that and a charging box and they show you how to make things all fascinating. Like even that is just gorgeous. And then you've got some art dolls, which are just think art dolls are so cute. Ah, and then vintage restyling. It's lovely. Love anything vintage, of course. And there's garden stuff in here as well. There's a little colouring thing in there. And food. Banana boats. Okay. We're out camping. Maybe that's um, something I can do. And then some patchwork. Looks like a little patchwork bag of some sort. A case to keep your bits and bobs in. Oh, okay, might come in handy. And what to do with old jeans. I used to make a lot of bags and things with old jeans and uh, aprons and not so much anymore but I had a whole heap of them. And if you're looking for old jeans you just go to the op shop they're super cheap and when I wasn't using them anymore I just re-gifted them back to the op shop. I had a big tub that I hadn't used. So as you can see Daphne's diary is a very different thing, very different take on creativity compared to the Somerset Studio magazine. Oh, it's got some bike things in it. I'm definitely going to be reading that. I love my cycling. And then it's got a big 
poster in here which you can pull out and oh isn't that cute <laughs> holiday countdown calendar some information about Marie Curie definitely be reading that very interesting woman very clever lady and oh look see making your own fans this is pretty too oh it's lovely oh okay I have to be looking for that so there you go the following Daphne story will appear on the 24th of August okay so you have to remember that the dates and things mentioned are not Australian dates because um you know they they don't line up because it takes a while for things to get here so isn't that gorgeous and then we're just going to move on and I'll show you through Frankie if you've not seen a copy of Frankie before so it's design art photography fashion travel music craft home and life so a very different take again this one So even if you, you know, got the magazine and you just use pages like that for backgrounds, it's very, uh, very nice. It's not even, you know, it's really part of the, there's no article or anything on there. Lots of little things to read in this one. <laughs> Mullets through the ages. Oh. <laughs> That'll be fun to read. I love peeking into people's houses. Love to see what they've got in there and how they're displaying things. always articles on ladies I have actually bought this before really interesting little bits of information or men too but really bits of, um, interesting bits of information about people it's nice to read other people's stories Socks and sandals. Apparently, that's um, maybe coming back. Used to be a big no no in my day, <laughs> especially for men. I think some men still wear socks and sandals. So as I said, these are three very different magazines that I've shown you today. But there's lots of interesting stuff in all of them. Plenty of stuff to read and delve into and plenty of stuff to get your creative juices going. If you're having a bit of a rut or whatever, it's always nice to sit and flick through a magazine and get some information and some inspiration. It doesn't take much, just one little thing and you might say that's it and shut the magazine and go and do something. So always really interesting. Oh wow, that's really cute. Looks like it's crocheted. And we're coming to the end of this one as well. Bit of food at the end. There you go. And we're at the end of the Frankie one as well. So that's it for today. I think I'll, um, I'll stop now. I've shown you the three magazines 
and also showing you my little labels. So I hope you enjoyed that and I do hope to be back with a craft video probably next week for you. I'll see how things go but that's the plan at this stage. Until then, this is Deborah. Thanks for watching. Cheers.